And now, two years later, a planet slowly fades away into outer space and implodes in a massive dark cloud. A mysterious silver object leaves after the planet's destruction. Then it flies to the Milky Way galaxy until it reaches Earth. The silver object enters the Earth's atmosphere, emitting cosmic radiations and causing molecular fluctuations. It has caused climate changes like snow in the deserts, warm water rivers that have frozen over, and massive blackouts in major cities. At an airport, the news report shows the cancellation of flights due to a massive blackout. The reporter cuts to talk about the upcoming nuptials of the superpower couple of the Fantastic Four, Reed Richards and Susan Storm. The couple is annoyed that the news is more focused on them than the mysterious anomalies that are happening. Reed, Susan, and Ben Grimm struggle as they take an economy flight while Johnny Storm flies outside the plane. However, they still arrive in their hometown, New York City, at the Fantastic Four headquarters on top of the Baxter Building. While Sue is busy with wedding preparations, Reed is secretly researching the global anomalies that are happening. Johnny comes to show off the new uniforms, which are full of logos and sponsorships, and the couple immediately turns him down. As Sue leaves, Johnny interrupts Reed as he wants to discuss having a bachelor party for him, but Reed does not want to have one, saying that parties are not his thing. Johnny implies telling Sue about his work, and he eventually relents to having one. Meanwhile, the silver object's movements around the globe bring him past Hassenstadt, Latveria, where the cosmic energy affects Victor Von Doom. This causes him to break free from his state as a biometal statue for two years. In New York, Johnny brings Reed and Ben to a nightclub for the bachelor party. At the same time, General Havier and two other military officials arrive at the Fantastic Four headquarters to look for Reed. Because of their insistence and urgency, Sue decides to bring them to him. Just when Reed is finally loosening up and having fun dancing with some women, Sue and General Hader come to interrupt them. Sue voices her annoyance to Reed, and they head to the kitchen for some privacy. The General tells the team that the government is purposefully downplaying the significance of the unusual occurrences to the public. They are concerned that the anomalies might pose a credible threat to national security. He shows them the photographs taken by their satellites of the flying object. Ben tells them it isn't a meteor, as it looks like it is giving off its energy. They also show them pictures of deep craters that have been appearing in remote areas throughout the world. Reed suggests a sensor that could pinpoint the object's location. The general asks if he could build it for them, but he says he can't, as he is too busy with their upcoming wedding that Saturday. Sue is surprised at this but happy at the same time. General Hager voices out his disappointment at this, and they leave the club. Johnny tries to flirt with one of General Hager's personnel, Captain Ray, who immediately turns him down. Meanwhile, Victor Von Doom finally pries his mask off him and reveals that he still has his powers and most of his skin is now back to normal. At night, Ben caught Reed making the tracker, which he said wouldn't do. Johnny sees it too and teases him that Sue will freak out on him, so Reed makes them promise him not to tell Susan. The day of Reed and Sue's wedding has come, and they are trying to keep the media and the public out of it. Susan expresses her concerns to Alicia, Ben's blind girlfriend, while she gets ready. She does not want her life exposed to the media and the public spotlight, claiming that her life is not typical. Alicia can connect to her since her relationship with Ben is very different. They are not a typical pair, but they don't let that stop them from being happy. If she loves Reed, she has nothing to be concerned about. Sue hugs her pal and heads to the bathroom mirror to get ready. When she notices a pimple on her forehead, she utilizes her skills to make it disappear. At the same time, Ben is looking for Reed to ready him for his wedding. Reed finalizes the sensor, puts it online, and reports it to the general on a video call with him. He finishes it and links it to his PDA. Then it finally sinks in Reed that he is getting married. Reed gets nauseous while Ben helps him to his feet to get ready. Later on, while Ben and Johnny are getting ready, Ben points out that Johnny is late and who says that the day isn't about him. The day is about Reed and Sue. He sees Alika and Ben all romantic, and he teases them about it. Meanwhile, Victor traces the silver flying entity and sees it heading straight to New York. After that, Alicia tells Johnny to stop teasing Ben. She also points out that he is jealous of them as he is scared to settle down with somebody, which makes him think deeply about it. Then Ben arrives with Sue, who is now all dressed. Johnny is preparing to walk his sister, Sue, down the aisle, and he compliments her and says their dad would be proud. While Ben and Reed are waiting at the altar, Reed's PDA gets a notification that the systems detect the phenomenon approaching New York City. However, Ben tells him to shut it off. Then the violins suddenly start, playing the bridal march, and Reed is busy watching Sue walk down the aisle. 
the pastor begins and Ree gets another notification that says that the sensors detect cosmic radiation nearby and asks the pastor to do it quickly, which annoys Sue. The cosmic radiation causes a blackout in New York, acting like an electromagnet, disrupting all electrical appliances and the helicopter. The now disabled chopper crashes into the wedding, scaring the guests. The blind Alicia freezes on the spot, and as she doesn't know what is going on, Ben quickly saves her from the helicopter's blades. Fortunately, the Fantastic Four keeps all the guests just in time. Then they see the silver entity fly over them, and Reed orders Johnny to follow it. Sue is devastated as another one of their weddings is cancelled. Johnny pursues the commodity around the city and sees it as a silver humanoid on a board, a silver surfer. He sees it go through a building, shocking him. He flies closer to confront the surfer, who drags Johnny by the throat and into the upper atmosphere and then drops him back toward Earth. Johnny manages to reactivate his powers in time, survives the fall, and lands in a desert. The silver surfer calls out to something in space, saying another world awaits and to do it quickly. Later, Johnny tells the team and the general about what he encountered, informing them of the silver man on what appears to be a board, which Ben teases him about. The general tells Reed to find a way to track it, as the surfer destroyed the sensor earlier. They leave, and Sue confronts Reed, saying they will never have normal lives as long as they are doing superhero work. She is implying that she wants them to retire from being a superhero. She leaves, saying she will go to check on Johnny. Johnny then tries to burn on and fly off the building while still in pain, but he falls to the ground. He says it must be because of his encounter with the surfer, as he feels something has changed. She tries to check on him by putting her hand on his forehead, and their powers suddenly switch. She is set on fire and accidentally flies off as she doesn't know how to control Johnny's fire powers. Johnny tries to flame on, but he becomes invisible. Reed sees Susan burning and flying and immediately goes outside of the building. He tells Johnny to touch Susan again, and instantly their powers switch back to each other. This makes her fall, leaving her with no clothes while the media pictures her. Thankfully, she turns invisible again. In the lab, Reed discovers that due to the exposure to the surfer, Johnny's molecular structure is in passive flux. This allows him to switch powers with his teammates through physical contact. Ben wants to try it out. Still, they advise him not to as they do not know of the possible repercussions. He says it might be fun, so he touches his shoulder of Johnny. He turns human, while Johnny has his stony appearance. Ben now has Johnny's fire powers, but before Ben can do any harm, Johnny touches him reverting their powers again. Reed asks everyone to maintain a distance from Johnny until the problem is resolved, and Ben teases that he will have fun with him and his new powers. Later, Susan and Reed talk privately, and he suggests after the crisis is over, they could leave it all behind. They could live their own lives and raise a family like ordinary people. Without them knowing, Johnny is eavesdropping on their conversation and is angry after hearing that the two will leave the team. After that, Johnny tells Ben and is also quite mad at the news. Alicia said they couldn't decide this because Reed and Sue had the right to live an everyday life away from the team. Meanwhile, Dew traces the surfer to the Russell Glacier in Greenland and makes him an offer to join forces. When the surfer rejects him, Doom attacks with his electrical powers. The surfer returns fire by blasting Doom through the ice, but the cosmic energy of the surfer's blast heals Doom's body instead of killing him. Sometime later, Reed traces the cosmic energy of the surfer, and he discovers that a series of planets the surfer visited previously had all been destroyed after eight days. Sue reminds him about the craters. The surfer is creating deep artificial holes around the globe for some unknown purpose. Reed discovers a pattern and determines the next crater will appear in London, and the team travels there. They leave for London but are too late to stop the hole from forming, and the Thames drains into it, which damages the London eye. Fortunately, the team manages to save it from collapsing. Susan uses her shield while Ben uses his strength to hold it up. Reed is about to tie it back together when Johnny unintentionally collides with Reed. Their powers switch and the wheel is about to fall, but Reed uses Johnny's powers to fix the wheel back together in time and everyone is safe. After that nearly failed mission, the general finally decided to get extra help. The group is shocked when Victor is still alive and returning to his non-metal state. Doom leverages his encounter with the surfer into a deal with the United States military, making the Fantastic Four reluctantly agree to work with Doom. Victor then shows footage of his encounter with the Silver Surfer in the Icy Mountains. From the footage, they observe that the surfer's energy attack is coming from his board. Reed deduces that the surfer's board is the source of his power, and if they separate the surfer from his board, he may lose his powers. Later, at a pub, Johnny and Ben express their dissatisfaction with working with Victor.
Johnny admits that he feels like a failure after what he accomplished during their previous mission. Ben assures him that he is not and should leave the planning to the wise. Johnny questions him about trusting Reed's end-of-the-world fantasy. Ben claims that Reed has never been wrong about anything before, referring to the cosmic anomaly that gave them their powers. Johnny inquires as to how he intends to spend his final moments. Ben responds honestly, wanting to spend it with his girlfriend, Alicia, and Johnny remarks that it would be good to have someone like him. Ben also mentions that he has him as his pal. Meanwhile, Reed is working tirelessly on developing something to separate the surfer from his board. Sue unknowingly gives him the idea of a pulse generator. He reports his concept to the general, saying he could do it in three hours since he works alone. Sue confronts Victor about this and sees him working on an unknown remote-like device. She threatens him by saying if he betrays them, she will make him explode from the inside. Later, Johnny gets out of the showers and Captain Ray immediately tells him the team is leaving to intercept the surfer. He tries to flirt with her by noting that she is waiting outside the showers for him. She turns him down again, pointing out his self-obsession and tells him about his recklessness for almost getting his team killed in the previous mission. He says he has been a little off his game as of late, and she says that life isn't a game and leaves. Sometime later, in the Black Forest of Germany, the surfer is in the middle of making another crater. Reed convinces the general to let his team take the lead, and the general eventually relents. The group splits up to install Reed's devices around the crater to trap the surfer when he comes out. While Susan is setting up the device, the surfer confronts her. She tries to set the machine on, but the surfer stops her. She immediately creates a force field around her, but the surfer quickly penetrates it. She asks why he is destroying the planet, and he answers by saying he has no choice but to do so. He reveals that he is not the destroyer, he is merely a servant to the destroyer of worlds and regrets the destruction he causes. During this, Victor convinces the general to open fire on the surfer. He protects Sue from the missile and retaliates by destroying some of the army's weapons. It distracts him and allows the four to fire the pulse, separating the surfer from his board. When he separates from the board, his body turns black and weakens him. Victor tries to get to the board, but before he touches it, the four arrive, and Reed tells him to stand back from the board. Then the military comes to imprison the surfer. Later in a secret military compound in Jakutsk, Siberia, the military imprisons the surfer and tortures him for information. While the general leaves the Fantastic Four in a room, not letting him close to the surfer, recalling the surfer's words and seeing that he protected Susan from the missiles, the four decide they must speak to him behind the military's back. They distract the guard watching them by the door while Susan uses her powers to sneak into the surfer's cell. There she learns about his master, known in his home world as Galactus, the devourer of worlds. This cosmic entity feeds on thermal and organic light-bearing planets to survive. He has to serve Galactus to prevent his world from being destroyed. The surfer's board is a homing beacon leading Galactus to Earth. The reason why he tries to protect Susan is that she reminds him of his wife. He tells her to enjoy their last few hours left as he is nearly here. At the same time, Galactus destroys the planet Saturn as it is on its way to Earth. Meanwhile, General Hager grants Victor permission to research the surfer's board, per their agreement. But he has to do it under the watch of an armed guard in General Hager. Upon arrival in the room where the board is, Victor suddenly attacks the general and his men, subduing them. As Reed is expected, Victor has evil intentions of taking the board's power. Doom puts on his mask and cloak, using the wrist pad device he created secretly to gain control of the board and free it. As he steps on it, he acquires greater power and Hager shoots at him, attempting to take him down. Doom kills the general with his new abilities and escapes on the board. The Fantastic Four flee their room and see Doom's demise. They save the surfer to pursue Doom. Captain Ray appears and holds a rifle at them as they prepare to depart. Johnny informs her that Victor murdered Hager and that they must stop him. The Fantastic Car plane arrives and they board it with Johnny flying alongside. Norenrat, the surfer's name, is finally revealed and he will assist the squad in saving their world. During their pursuit, Doom suddenly ambushes them and they try to convince him to give up the board as it is a beacon for the destroyer. Reed splits the Fantastic Car into three parts to confuse Doom. The four try to trap Doom between them but retaliate by creating a storm to spin them around and make them crash into the streets of Shanghai. Fortunately, they aren't injured, and Norin tries to confront Doom, who makes a spear from the board and throws it at him. To save him, Susan immediately jumps in front of Norin and creates a force field, but the spear manages to break through it and impale Susan in the chest. 
Johnny tries to help her, but Ben stops him from touching her so that he doesn't hurt her with his powers. Suddenly, Galactus is closer to Earth now. Sue urges them to find a way to get the board. Reed tells them that Doom must have a pulse emitter linking him to the board. They need to take it out before they can separate him from the board. The plan requires the whole team, but due to Sue's injuries, she is unable to help. Johnny gets an idea to combine their powers with him, even if they do not know the possible repercussions this can entail him. They all agree, and they combine their hands with Johnny. Now Johnny has Susan's, Reed's, and Ben's powers. Johnny battles the cosmic energy-empowered Doom through the city. He finally succeeds in breaking Doom's device and his control over the surfer's board. At the same time, Ben uses a nearby crane to knock Doom into the harbor. When Galactus finally shows up, Susan passes away in Reed's arms. His strength is fully recovered when the surfer eventually regains control of his board. He utilizes his powers to heal Susan, tells Reed to cherish every moment with her, and tells her that she is right. Everybody does have a choice. With Johnny's assistance, he launches himself into Galactus to defend Earth. Norin tells Galactus that he refuses to serve it further and destroy more planets. A powerful energy explodes from him, killing Galactus and, it appears, the surfer by engulfing it in a cosmic rift. Happy to be able to save the Earth thanks to Norin's help, Johnny hugs Ben and finds out that he can no longer switch powers with his teammates. The team rejoices and hugs each other, grateful that they are alive. Susan and Reed have also decided not to leave the team. They finally accept that they can't run away from their abilities and responsibility to Earth. Then Sue asks if Reed is ready for another media-filled wedding, but Red has a better idea. A few days later, after the events in Shanghai, Reed and Susan have a small wedding in Japan, without the media and public eye. During the marriage, they are interrupted yet again by an alert. Venice is sinking into the Adriatic Sea. To Reed's surprise, Sue is the one to ask the officiant to finish the wedding quickly, and finally, they are happily married. Just before they leave, Sue throws the bouquet, and Johnny sees that his date, Captain Ray, nearly catches it, so he quickly lights it up in flames, which implies that he still needs to be ready to settle down. Then they leave using the Fantastic Car, flying into the air while making the Fantastic Four logo. The movie ends with the Silver Surfer and his seemingly lifeless body floating through space until his eyes open. Then his board races back towards him, indicating that he is still alive. Thanks for watching. Kindly subscribe to my channel to get notified when we post the next recap. See you next time.